Live Band come to you live from Better Box Studios for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Here's Tony Hinchcliffe. Hey, here we are. Another episode of Kill Tony. How you doing, Red Band? Hey, we're both alive. Especially yes. you. Yes, <laughs> especially me. Lots of chaos in the world today. Hit close to home here in beautiful Los Angeles, California. We're sorry about the delay of having to delay Monday's uh, show. It was not because of um, the curfew. It was because of uh, the National Guard defending protests on both sides of the building here where we are taping this. Yeah, Better it, it Box was, Studios. It was in the thick of it right here. Yeah. Yeah, That's, we simply physically couldn't <laughs> do it. So, but if we could have, we would have been here. We made it through uh, every single episode without missing a beat of COVID 19, yeah. which ended everybody else's show for a little bit. Uh, but we could not. Um, we just could simply not come in and loot BetterBox and do a podcast on Monday. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully we can get out tonight. You know, we just had an earthquake. Yeah, we're going to be fine. <laughs> Everything's okay. <laughs> and, and just an earthquake. Anyway, business is booming. You know what's up. Clearly, the world is uh, going to shit. Luckily, I have a tushy. There's a toilet paper shortage. Everyone has an ass. Everyone deserves the gift of tushy. It's an amazing bidet for your butthole. Wiping your butt with toilet paper does not remove all the shit, people. If you pooped on any other part of your body, would you just wipe it off with dry paper? No. Water cleans better than dry paper. Thankfully, there's a new sleek bidet attachment that clips onto your existing toilet and sprays your butt completely clean with fresh water. It's called Tushy, and it's the best thing you can do for your butt. Tushy sprays directly to your ass and removes the poop completely so you aren't sitting on bacteria that leads to nasty things like hemorrhoids, yeast infections, UT UTIs, itchy assholes, and skid marks. No one wants that. But days are common in the rest of the world. I know that. Japan, every every bathroom in Japan has one of these. A bidet saves you money on toilet paper. You still use a little paper, you know, to, to dab it dry, you know, because, you know, it, it has a little wetness to it. So you just use one little square, dry it up. Tushy sprays your ass with fresh water. It's not toilet water. Tushy connects to the water supply behind your toilet to spray your dirty parts with clean, fresh water. It's the same water you brush your teeth with. It's the same water you brush your teeth hey, with. I don't on. know if I'm brushing my teeth post-tushy with the tushy water. <laughs> Wet wipes are worse than toilet paper. They're terrible for the environment. They cause anal fissures. You don't want your anus fissuring. And the best part of Tushy, it's only $79. What? Yeah, go to hellotushy.com slash killtony and get 10% off your order. I love my Tushy. Take care of it with hellotushy.com slash killtony to get 10% off your order. It's crazy out here in the world, people. Everything's happening. Bad cops are bad. Looting and destroying small businesses is bad. Um, but there's some good things happening. You can get a candle from Damn Good Candle Company. Mm -hmm. The new uh, Hinch Me I'm Dreaming candle yeah. is selling off the shelves, I'm being told. I saw a couple photos sent to uh, this week to the Kill Tony Instagram. Yeah, yeah. they're happening. Yeah. And it smells absolutely delicious. Um, that's because it smells like my butthole, which I keep clean with tushy. Um, you're doing a lot of VR reality stuff. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. You're escaping the chaos. And I just debuted my new pet project, Roast Master Class, where I go over uh, roasting. And uh, it's a fun, funny at times, and educational course about how to better make fun of people. In these crazy times, you can defend yourself from getting bullied at work, perhaps by a family member, perhaps a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Perhaps you want to roast the cops. And perhaps, or perhaps you're a cop that wants to roast someone instead of uh, doing physical harm to them. You could get get it all, learn it all. Sign up for Roast Master Class at patreon.com backslash Hinchcliffe. We're touring, believe it or not. I have, uh, I have uh, some fun dates coming up, um, and uh, we all do. We're going to Miami at the end of July, Boston in August, Houston in August, Dallas in August, Fort Worth. Texas in August. A lot of Texas. Salt Lake City, September 11th. That's a fun date to be out. Moon Tower, 917. Toronto with the Queen Elizabeth Theater, September 29th. Tembler Brewing Company, October 13th. Sacramento, the 14th and 15th of October. And San Francisco, the 16th, 17th, and 18th of October. Washington, D.C. again in November or December, something like that. Tacoma, October 30th. Yeah, ha, 
Uh, and thanks to Vito's Pizza, he, yep. uh, you know, they dropped off some pizzas. So hopefully Vito's is safe from all this. Uh, Chaos. They're in the middle of absolutely everything as well. Only a couple minutes down the street from me. I mean, everything is in chaos. But you know what? Let's not even get too much into it. This is an escape from all the fucking drama that's happening in the world. I don't want to talk about it all day for sure. I don't even want to think about it. There's fucking bugs in the studio. Who? What show was in here before us? Oh, you don't even want to throw another uh, show under the bus. Uh, Look at these guys. These are the Bug Lives Matter people. <laughs> so let's have some fun. Let's take our minds off all the chaos. We could talk about it for hours, but that's what every other freaking podcast is doing in the world. Instead, let's have some fun here in the studio. Some very special treats lined up. Let's begin by bringing out, uh, how, about, how about our first guest since the quarantine? How about that? Does that sound like fun? Ladies and gentlemen, we have not seen this guy since the Ice House in March. One of my best pals in the world did a, the, you know, we were, we were the last, I did the last weekend at the La Jolla Comedy Store with this guy. We had a blast. One of my favorite comedians on the planet, one of the best roasters in the world, and one of the high-ranking regulars here at Kill Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest tonight the one and only David Lucas is here, everybody. What's up, y'all? Clap for David, everyone. What's up, man? Hello, David. What up, man? Welcome. I just want to let everybody know before they immediately make their assumptions that I called David in here because of a good PR stunt. <laughs> David actually asked me, right, David, if you can come down in Absolutely. the studio and hang out with us. Absolutely. So I it's was... not my PR stuff. Why are you shaking your head? We all know that's not true. No, it <laughs> is absolutely true. I've been, I've been protesting all week, but I've been protesting with white people who don't chant that long. Yeah! The, the Black Lives Matter chant in a white crowd lasts three black lives, and that's it. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's oh it. Oh, my God. <laughs> they were tired after the third black life. I'm like, damn, I got to go protesters of black people i'm so glad you're here we're gonna have so much fun tonight yes sir we are we're gonna meet some of these crazy people from all around the world we're gonna have a blast and as you know david there's a band on this show every single episode they commit to being different characters we never know what they're going to be i almost accidentally walked in on them on this one i'm gonna be honest with you i went to go wash my hands again right before the show And I forgot that they were getting ready out there, but I didn't see anything. I'm excited to find out what they are. Ladies and gentlemen, they're different characters every show. Let's find out what they are tonight. It's the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, and Jet Ski, Jesse Johnson. Whoa, we know these guys. Hey. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The newscasters have arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, no doubt about it. They've been featured on the show numerous times. Very exciting. Uh, Remind me of what your name is. Good evening, Tony. Your lead news anchor of tonight, Chet Lightning. Chet Lightning. How could I forget that? Absolutely. Welcome, Chet. Busy times for you right now. Am I right? Busy times. Swamped. I could barely make it here this evening. Okay. And uh, who's this young little uh, Mexican vampire behind you here? I will let him introduce himself. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Tony. I am the weatherman. My name is Wet Bax. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> is there like an initial? Should I just call you W today or something? WB. WB. When you see the police coming, you warn a brother. All right. <laughs> and then uh, I believe we've never had a female newscaster on. Are you new to the news team? Hello, my name is Lisa Lookout, and I'm here to look out for you on the scene. Wow, I'll Lisa Lookout. She is our live field reporter on duty this fine evening, Tony. Wow. Well. And it is good to be inside. I love it. Absolutely. A small earthquake just struck Los Angeles. Not sure if you two felt that while the podcast was going on. It did. It's true. I didn't even feel it. Red Band felt it. Yes. There was an earthquake. I saw, the only reason, because like Tony was doing this at the same time, so I thought maybe it was him. But then I looked and I saw these wires. Like going, I'm like, why are those wires moving? Did you it's, guys feel it in the in the room? No. Like right when, right before we started, like two minutes before we started. Yep. It was at 5:58 p.m. Yep. It was uh. 
The suspect is still at large. Yes. <laughs> Earthquake the comedian. <laughs> In fact, yes, indeed. That reminds me by you saying 558. I was confused for a second, but that is true. We are uh, recording um, not live live right now. We are pre-recording. It's, it's live to tape. Live to tape. A couple hours right before we are streaming to a, uh, a private link and uh, uploading it immediately afterwards so that we can abide by the curfew because there are protests all around us right now. Right? That's right, Tony. <laughs> so let's get tonight's show started. Uh, we're going to get, uh, we're going to watch a minute sent in from an absolute new legend here on this show. This guy uh, famously phoned in from Tijuana, Mexico. He gave he wrote jokes for a hooker. Is that the right word? A prostitute uh, to say a couple weeks ago. And um, it's weird that we can't say the word hooker. Like it's like it's like a it's it's a it's a demeaning job, right? I mean, uh, if it's illegal to do it, you should be able to call them bad words. Yeah. Well, no. It's a, it's a, a lady of the night, a street walker is worker. preferred. A sex worker. Yeah. Or just person. Anyway, uh, I think in Tijuana, though, I think in Tijuana they're called hookers. Right? I don't think they give This just in, you are wrong. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Manolo is back. Let's see what he sent in to raise the stakes this week. This is a minute with Manolo to get tonight started. Here we go. Here it is, a minute with Manolo. <laughs> nice. Oh, that is so cool. Hi, Tony. <laughs> I'm on location here in TJ with a <laughs> Mexican <laughs> prostitute. <laughs> Hi, Tony. I miss you, baby. Wow. Tony, <laughs> you left your dildos and booty holes here. Love you, papacito. <laughs> Iba a invitar a una amiga, pero me dijo que estaba tirada en cama con hepatitis. Qué envidia. Ella siempre bien suertuda con los extranjeros. Mi papá era tan malo, pero tan malo. ¿Qué tan malo era? Que un día le pregunté. Ay, se me fue. Papá, ¿por qué eres tan malo? Y me dijo, cállate y sigue mamando. <risa> <risa> Nunca supe cómo salir del closet con mis papás. Hasta que un día decidí comprarme un gato. Así agarraron el rollo. Ya te dijo él, regresa a mis pelucas, cabrón. <risa> Wow, incredible. I had her. I had her set up. You are I unbelievable. What can I say? You are quite the modern day artiste. Grazie, signore. Mi fa molto piacere conoscerti, ragazzo. Sei la donna più bella di questo posto. Cosa sto facendo, amore? Yo, I had her set up. I had her set up for today, but for eight o'clock. Ah, see. yeah, we had to change things around real quick, but it's all good. We're glad to see you. Who's that holding the bottle next to you there? What do you got there? It's all good in most hoods, right? Yeah, I this guess so. Is... <laughs> oh, that's what's up. Wow, it's the same girl, huh? No, <laughs> no, it's a different one. <laughs> wow, this, this one's a professional. Look at that. Jeez, Louise, are you still in Tijuana? Still, baby. Just for Kill Tony show. Just for you, my friend. My goodness. Living the dream down there. Where did you find that transgender girl? By the way, that's what Joel would look like if he was a girl. Mm -hmm. if he just went... I thought I was looking into a mirror. <laughs> By the way, I will never give you your wigs back. Those are mine. Of course, of course, of course. Of course. Yo, she had flavored toilet paper. I've never seen that before in my life. Flavored oh. toilet paper. Mm. What was the flavor? <laughs> Horchata? <laughs> the flavor was shit. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. 
We need to get her a tushy for sure. Yeah, yeah. Tony jealous as hell about that flavor toilet. Paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fruit roll up, you know, like a fruit roll up. You didn't smell it or taste it or anything? No, of course not. I was tempted. I, was just, I felt like her, confused. I felt like sir. I felt like sir, confused. Sir with a Z. I felt confused because she looked kind of hot, right? But I didn't know if I wanted to fuck her that much, you know? Well, I, I what confused. your dick Look. taste like? There you go. No, see, <laughs> like a fruit roll up. Like a fruit roll up. <laughs> Incredible. She definitely had a deeper voice than I do. <laughs> that was impressive. I'm still trying to understand flavored toilet paper. I know. Yeah, what's that for? How does your ass taste something? No, I think it's that so means, you can yeah, wipe it exactly, and then that, they can, you can that, eat it like she's a dirty girl. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, that's kind of a, like a David Lucas Rose, right? Like uh, like Tony seems like the type of dude that has toy flavored toilet paper. Sound like that, right? That yeah, is true. That sounds like a Tony invention. Yeah, yeah it is true. <laughs> I actually... Yo, uh, I bet yeah, I actually sometimes will put uh, mustard on my toilet paper. I'll unroll it, I'll put some mustard down it, and then I roll it back up again. Why don't I... you just put it on the penis? That, exactly, that's something that goes down here in TJ. Eh? You put some mustard and some coke, and it gives you a long way. Well, it depends, right? right uh, only Tony's ass got taste buds. That's true. <laughs> there you go. That's what we're getting at. Yeah. Tony's toilet paper is pinch me, I'm shitting. <laughs> Hilarious. I love it. So Manolo, any, uh, anything else crazy happening down there in Tijuana during all this? Is there uh, are there any well, race wars down there? No, not really. Honestly, Mexicans don't give a fuck, to be honest with you. They don't really give a fuck, man. Honestly. And yeah. and, and still to this day. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but they'll see a black guy, which I'm in love with the black culture. Me personally, you know, I'm in love with the white culture to start off with, right? But they'll, they'll see a black guy and go, oh, the negro, the negro. They'll do it just like that, straight up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, is that a negative, is that a negative word there or? No, it's like, a, like they call me that way because I'm, I'm brown, I'm browner than the average bear. So right. they call me that, they call me negro, you know? Right. You uh, guys have bears walking around? Uh, yeah, of course. And the and where I got that when I where I got that TS from, they got a lot of bears walking around. <laughs> wow. So seriously, what did you do with that girl? Did you make out or anything? I felt like Juan Norton, like the Mexican Juan Norton. You know, you can call me that from now on. Looking for a TS everywhere. Is that Ed Norton's Jim brother Norton. or something? Jim Norton, Juan Norton. You can call oh. me Juan Norton. Yeah. Oh, there you go. All right. There you go. Okay. Fuck yeah, Manolo. <laughs> Wouldn't Jim Norton be Jaime Norton? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Shut the fuck up. Exactly. Back to you in the studio. Wow. Tony. <laughs> this just in. Another Mexican man has been reality checked by another Mexican man. Damn. There how you go. You, there how you. do you out Mexican a guy currently in Tijuana? Like this. That's oh. enough. That's enough. I'm gonna bring him a reaction next time. I'm telling you right now. I'm gonna bring him fucking Norteño next time. I love, it. <laughs> I love it. I'm waiting. For I'm, my I'm a little fajitas. worried, Tony, and I gotta I, and I gotta tell you this. I'm a little bit worried because because when you guys um, start making the the in-house shows like in the comedy store, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it because uh, I went to the doctor because I was feeling a little bit ill. The doctor told me I was very sick, very fucking sick, right? He told me, oh, dude, you're sick, right? Uh, fucking your grandma ain't sane. Ain't healthy. No? No? Okay. Thanks. No? You ain't got the... No? This just in. That was totally worth it. <laughs> All right. Well, What's Manolo, up with the curvier... Do you pay curvier, these hookers to laugh them? at your jokes? Yeah, I'm paying for everything, you know? I mean sex I pay, well, I'm sorry. Uh, I take that back. They'll even do that. Oh, at least he said I pay him to go away, right? <laughs> he has to pay him a lot of money to laugh at his jokes. That's like... Yeah. That's like the the highest uh, ten pesos, highest charge. Here's a little plug, like the 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 what is it the bidet the tushy thing? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I've been using this. I mean, I have been actually using this. That's why I went to the doctor, and because uh, I told him it's uh what do you call this wipey wipes? Oh okay. Because my what? ass hurt like hell. I yeah. Why'd you go to the doctor for real? Did you really? <laughs> 
No, my, my ass hurt like a lot. I don't know if it was because of these things. My ass hurt. And I told him, doctor, what's wrong with me? My ass hurts like hell. He said, you got ask Alzheimer's. Dr. Redband what he thinks. <laughs> uh, he uh, is trying to milk this joke that didn't go well. <laughs> uh, and he's, yes, he's trying exactly. to push our sponsor <laughs> into the mix to, to make That's it right. seem nice. Because those things clog <laughs> toilets. That is true. And you can unclog your toilet by going to hellotushy.com slash killtone and getting 10% off your $79 bidet. Uh, the same water you, you brush your teeth with. Yep, for sure. Uh, Manolo, <laughs> thank you so much. You got the party started tonight with another new minute with a transgender uh, prostitute in Tijuana, Mexico. Like only you can, Manolo. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you, Manolo. Give me any homework, sir. I'm here for you guys. Good night. The great Gino just walked into the room from uh, Speedweed, from Betterbox, from Go Girl. He's got Go Girl in his hand. We love Gino. Which reminds me again, buy a candle. Damngoodco.com. Our next comedian uh, phoning in goes by the name of Paul W. So here's a minute from Paul. Here we go. W. Hey! Here he comes. <laughs> he got you? <clears throat> COVID-19. Huh. COVID-19? Horny teens pussy anal gangbang dorm sex? Oh, oops. Looks like I selected LimeWire instead of Google. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> anyway. I used to shoot a lot of video. I got to see a lot of the world shooting video. I've been to New York, Iceland, Mexico. Right, Joel? Right? Hey, Joel. <laughs> oh, look at Joel. Hey, buddy. Hi, Joel. Hi, Joel. What are you doing? What are you doing, Joel? Are you playing your drums? Look at you go. Good job, buddy. Mwah. Fuck Mexico. All right? <laughs> In fact, I've been to Mexico three times. Three times, and all I took away from those visits. <laughs> okay. I guess that's my time. Wow. <laughs> uh, hilarious. Bravo, Paul W., an incredible performance. You got the whole room Ooh. cracking up. The production booth, everybody's laughing in I here. I thought that was a live video of me, by the way. I'm like, why are they yeah. showing me right we now? We did. Yeah. <laughs> Another incredible part of that is that when I went to write down what you were talking about, I was taking the note COVID, and it switched over to an over-the-top <laughs> shot of me taking a note. Very impressive, dude. Clearly, you are a oh. uh, studier of the show. Oh, big time, man. I'm so nervous right now Woo! well you shouldn't be you should be in full <laughs> celebration mode because you just uh paid it forward and made us all laugh extremely hard perhaps uh, one of the hardest laughs that we've had during these quarantine episodes you yeah. took you took everything that uh people that have been doing right and you did it right you made a little bit of a production out of it um, except for fucking with me <laughs> look at that guy look at Joel in the background there Fuck Joel. that picture will never Joel. not be funny it's still my best <laughs> yeah shout outs to thea thyson Shout out to Thea Thyssen first. Of yes, that's, yeah. forever. You know, obviously her art. Joel, I fucking love you, dude. I only behaved to you that way because you looked so pathetic in that form. Okay, I fucking love you, dude. Huge fan. <laughs> I love the first episode of Mostly Sorry. Fucking loved it. Okay, that's right. There you go. Hey, good. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to have to measure, have a dick off right now. Whoa! No, you, it sounds like he is mostly sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, where are you? I'm in uh, Atascadero, California. Atascadero. Uh, do you know where San Luis Obispo is? Yep. It's about 20 minutes out. Oh, cool. You ever been to Osaka Joe's Sushi in San Luis Obispo? I actually have not. No, I don't spend too much time in San Luis, actually. The guy used to run a sushi joint there, and he would do comedy shows, and he would pay, basically at the time... Uh, he would pay openers and features from Los Angeles to come up and headline. And uh, it was a lot of fun. A lot of uh, crazy nights there in beautiful San Luis Obispo we all had back in the day. Seven, At eight years ago. At a sushi restaurant. Yep. He would wow. feed us. 
unbelievable sushi. Maybe it was nine or ten years ago because I remember not getting to eat sushi a lot back then. Yeah, and, close to nine, ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, and um, I mean fucking amazing we would get wasted afterwards and it was you know the shows were basically <laughs> halfway pointless he was basically he had extra money and he would pay to have comedians come up to basically entertain him in front of his restaurant of 20 30 <laughs> people who had no idea that comedians were even performing there that night and we'd stand in the corner and try our best and then eat like kings and drink like kings for the rest i remember that's the only time i've ever uh, at one point uh I believe we were dancing with guns at one point what? at the end of that night. Me and whoever I went up there with. It was like me, Benji, some other people. It was a lot of Who, fun. Whose like guns guys? were they? The guy's guns. We had the, the, it was like this. It was, it's hard to describe. It was just uh, <laughs> some of those wild nights back in the day. He would heckle you as well. Yeah. I don't remember that. I think he was taking advantage of you. Yeah, he was situation. just heckling you. <laughs> it was the whole lineup that was going on that evening. Sometimes he would drink a little bit more than uh, than other times. What do you do for work, Paul? Uh, well, I used to do video, um, yep. and then I stopped doing that, and I'm currently just working as a cleanup guy at a restaurant chain, which I won't name because they're kind of bitches, and they'll probably fire me, so... There you go. Absolutely. Mm, Just yeah, call them bitches and they will not fire you. Fucking Applebee's, hey, huh? I, I tell you what, there's been a guy, part of what's been so crazy about working there is there's a guy named Tony who, uh, you know, he's a little more strict. And so when I talk to people about Kill Tony, they're like, hey, I didn't hear anything. I'm like, hey, guys, I'm not talking about killing Tony. It's a show. I swear. <laughs> And now there's rumors that there might be some drama going on, so I'm hoping I didn't cause that by using the words kill Tony so often at work, but oh, we'll see. Very interesting. We'll see. What are your plans with the uh, with the Joel cutout after this? What are you going to do? Because that is basically, I don't know if you know this, but printing that is the same thing that happens if the Babadook book arrives at your front doorstep. Like the, <laughs> That will cause an actual haunting of your place if you keep it around too long. I tell you what, it's brought nothing but uh, good luck and cheer so far. God. It's also scared Check all of out, the dude. bird off of his premises. That's right. We're starting a garden, baby. Look at him. Wow. That's so oh, great. Joel. That just Look never gets old. Where does that He's picture got, like, come nice from? I don't know. Somebody drew... Yeah, a very uh, serious picture of oh. Joel Berg. Cause that looked like Freddy Krueger with good skin. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what Thank Joel you. actually <laughs> looks like. <laughs> you do, nigga. Damn. I love it. Yeah, um, a so quick Paul, note on that video. A, have you ever done stand-up comedy before? Have you ever done comedy on a stage? Never, but that's all I think about. So I would like to try at some point whenever we can again. Yeah, for sure. How far are you from uh, Sunnyvale? Hmm. I don't That's know. That's farther. That's farther north. Are there places um, in Obispo? Uh, there's like, I think, coffee shops and stuff. I haven't tried it yet because, I don't know. I just haven't tried it yet. I wanted I wanted the first time to be on Kill Tony, so I guess technically this is it. But I, it's different than a live format, you know, which is why I made the video because it's hard to translate standing in front of a webcam and trying to do comedy so i tried to yeah. switch it up oh you did it tell Maybe. that to manolo <laughs> hey i didn't get to see it i only got to hear it it was it was all messed up so it's very very professional performance uh paul and I love you. I love Thank your you. shirt. Thank That's a very, very Jeremiah Watkins esque shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's a very is. good boy shirt. <laughs> Jeremiah, you have one yep. like that. Am I correct? Yes, there is a good boy line available at jeremiahwatkins.com. <laughs> <laughs> good boy. Hey. I'm a good boy. I think <laughs> my mommy <laughs> loves me. Available at jeremiahwatkins.com. Yeah. <laughs> heck yeah, heck yeah. I'll take it. Oh, that's uh, that's definitely a I know both of my parents type of shirt. Do you know? Are you close with both of your parents? <laughs> um, I don't know. I I previously would have said yes, but I guess oh. if you're uh, going along the Jeremiah theme, I've recently gone through quite a bit of a existential crisis with religion, and this is partly why I made the video because I felt sort of the freedom to do so. And, wow. Uh, Tell us a little bit more yeah. about your uh, break from religion here. How In did... a shocking okay. turn of events, this man turns <laughs> his back on the Lord. That's right. Hey. 
<laughs> Let's hear it for losing hope, baby. Let's hear it for losing faith. So what happened? Nope. What happened exactly? Your parents are like, let's go to church, even though the coronavirus is happening. And you're like, are you guys losing nah. your mind? Like, what happened? Uh, no, I, I was I was raised in a religious household. Um, and it was just kind of like heavy stuff and stuff I was always pretty resistant to. But I fully believed it. I drank the Kool-Aid at least half yeah. of it. And, yeah, you uh, spilled some on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only on the sleeves, yeah. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I just kind of realized um, I was afraid to admit that I wasn't into it anymore. And right. it's hard to get out and it's scary. Uh, but once I did and had that conversation with my parents, I was like, holy shit, let's uh, make a Kill Tony video. You know, I feel like I can do it now and be myself. I love it. I mean, I love yeah. it. This is just proof that, you know, once you say goodbye to one Lord, come over to kill Tony and you, I will welcome you with open arms, my friend, you know, it's just like the oh, Lord. Beautiful. Uh, there's beautiful. always there's nothing more like the Lord than Tony Hinchcliffe. Where, where there was uh. one set of footprints. It's because I carried you, Paul. Mm. I don't think you could do that. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> Very yeah. strong. No, this is this is a big deal. Thing. You guys are you guys are the shit. I uh, this is like my favorite show of all time. I tell everyone about it. So I love it's that, a big deal Paul. You were absolutely hilarious. Your uh, your um, fandom of the show absolutely showed through. Again, making us laugh during these wild times is quite the accomplishment and uh, not easy to do. David, you have anything else for Paul? You showing this guy nah, some that mercy? Shit, that shit was dope, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, I went through the same shit you went through with religion, bro. My my family tried not to mess with me when I told them that I no, lo no longer identified as a Christian. But uh, Would you guys have any tips you can give to Jeremiah so he can finally get over it? You just got you just got to your parents got to know that you're serious when you do that shit. Don't be don't be straddling the fence. Just do that shit and still come around. He's so ready to play that sax. Uh, Jim, Paul, I, thank I would you love so to pick your brain about that. Yeah. Man, like, yeah. You, Just hit me on, hit me on I, IG, I you dog. Talk to Pete Holmes. It's, yeah, hit dude, I would IG. love to talk to you, too. Okay. Hit me on IG, Heck bro. Yeah. There, go, there he goes. I Paul, will, thank you so much. Paul thank W., you, thank everybody. You. Thank you, Paul. Rock and roll, buddy. This is that time, as you people see, the one, the only, William Montgomery is here. Here's William Montgomery. Oh, my Jesus, thank you. He heard that I was a Jesus. There he is, William Montgomery. Hello, William. How's it going? I'm actually a Jesus freak. No, I'm kidding. This is about to be, I am, but this is about to be probably my best set. Um, I'm proud. I'm proud to announce I'm joining the Mighty Morphin Power Bottoms. Uh, Paul Walker, more like Paul Crasher. I heard the reason Paul Walker crashed was because the director forgot to say cut. So I've got a La La Land joke. Uh, what's red, white, and blue? It's Emma Stone's body at the bottom of a pool. Um... So I guess the question is, what happens to George Floyd's counterfeit money? You think he left it in the will? I'm not fucking with it. <laughs> Seriously, what happens to his money? I'm a George Floyd fan. I was at Neiman Marcus earlier, looting televisions, you name it. I'm a George Floyd guy. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. It's filled with black people. I like black people. I just say, I mean, black what happens to his counterfeit matters. money? What happens to his counterfeit money? I don't know. Who set up the will? William Montgomery, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. I mean, here's what I'm going to say is that you know, 75% of the way through that set, I'm thinking to myself, wow, a Paul Walker joke from 11 years ago being used like it happened last week, like it's controversial or something like that. Meanwhile, what it did was is it completely set me up to think that, well, it's not going to, you know, he's not going to get better than that, right? And then, boom. 
the, the, it was the ultimate misdirect because it set us up for a super topical. George Floyd. <laughs> that's really? why I'm. That's that's why I'm looting and and pillaging. I'll be quite frank. I'm not black. You can tell from the color of my skin. I'm not black, but I'm gonna pillage. I'm gonna pillage for that guy. David, what do you like think about pirate. that? Aren't you cool about that? <laughs> What have you been pillaging exactly? Liquor store. Literally, I was at a Neiman Marcus pillage. earlier. I was at a Neiman Marcus earlier. I got some sandals. How many pairs of sandals? Like four size four. So I don't know if any. I can drop my eBay account after this or whatever. But yeah, pull the phone back a little bit. You got a haircut, huh? Let's see it. Oh wow! Hmm. He like a he like a grown ass Opie from uh, Andy Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow you continue to look more and more like the principal from Billy Madison as time goes on. I caramba. I guess so. I guess so, William. So how do you like your new haircut? It's been cool. It's uh, it's helped me swim. Yeah. Can you can you put your chin down a bit? Can we see what the top looks like? <laughs> You're a little bit shy about that? <laughs> Thin as a bitch. <laughs> What'd yeah. you just say, David? Thin. You need some more pine straw on your head. Hold on, wait. Show I us need the some lawn. more pine straw. Show, show us the lawn behind you for a second. Go back to the lawn again. Put it over your head. Show yeah. us the lawn behind you. Yeah, we never get to see what it looks like out there. You got yeah. a bike poster. stack. You're not showing us the Look lawn. Look at that poster. Yep, we see the poster. Show us the lawn. How do you get over here? <laughs> I'm Hold serious. the phone up. How do you get it? <laughs> it's interesting. It looks exactly like uh <laughs> Forget it. I can't do the joke because you're not showing me the lawn properly for some weird reason. Uh, how big is that fucking picture of you behind you? God, it's like two two feet by three feet. Wow! I and just that doesn't need, upset I, the the grandparents that you're you're mooching off of for the last two no, months. It doesn't. That... Stop! 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 No, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they don't like to see a naked picture of their <laughs> their niece's boyfriend that won't leave their, their house for three boyfriend. months. Is that what it is? Their niece's Whatever boyfriend. Whatever she is. Are you wearing dentures? <laughs> you have great teeth, William. I never really noticed it before, but now that uh Dr. Awesome. Now that you're starting to randomly cut your hair and your eyebrows off, I'm starting to notice other features about you that I've never noticed before. You must have a tushy. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same water you brush your teeth with. <laughs> William, have you been working at the storage place at all during this? Uh, I'm starting again tomorrow. So, yeah, tomorrow. starting again tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. What time tomorrow? Uh, 9.30 uh -huh. p.m. <laughs> 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 what have you been eating and drinking? Tell us a bit about your diet. What's been going on in, with your nutrition lately? A lot of tomato soup, a lot of, uh... A lot of the drink you pour in uh, two percent milk, I think it's called. It's what is it called? It's not. A, it's a uh, not a Nestle. Not a. It has vitamins and minerals. Is it um, Ovaltine? I'm gonna Ovaltine. tell you this: yes, your brother, yes, yes. your brother in cursive here, David Lucas, is in studio as a guest, and uh, he's looking better than ever. All yeah, this, baby. all this marching is really paying off. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I, I told you to tell people that your job you don't feel comfortable. What did you say? Huh? I told, I told you to tell those people at the storage place you don't feel comfortable and get on unemployment. Can you though. say that a little bit slower? I can't understand you. I'll text it to you, bro. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> William, anything else? Uh, anything else crazy this week? Yeah, I actually uh, became a member of a subreddit for crocodiles. People get at the circus or fair or whatever, and I, I flushed one down the toilet a couple nights ago, and I'm worried uh, in the sewer system out here in Reseda, there's a super crocodile with food down in the sewer. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> well, William, we're gonna get, we're gonna get going, and we're gonna let you sober up before you have to be at work tomorrow at 9:30 p.m. <laughs> there he is, William Montgomery, everybody. <laughs> You guys keep playing. Your next comedian goes by the name of Nick Davis, everyone. Here we go. <laughs> Nick Davis, here he is. Hey, good to be here. If you're wondering why I'm naked, I'm using this content from my OnlyFans. I don't have an OnlyFans, really, but I do subscribe to a few. Uh, only for the butthole pick, so I can diagnose hemorrhoids. I put it in the comments. The girls get all mad. I like to call it hemorrhoid rage. I had a life-changing experience recently. I took acid, reflux medication, and it's really nice to wake up without hiccups. I am trying to get over my fear of needles, but doing heroin, and I gotta say, it's fentanyl it's cracked up to be. My family's pretty white trash, if you couldn't tell. My family's so white trash that my family tree is split because my uncle hit it when he got a second DUI. Everyone's trying to make an extra buck recently. I'm no different, that's why I started a stick and poke henna tattoo business. It's just an extra fine Sharpie. Hey! Yo, yo, am I coming through? What's up? Hello, What's Nick going Davis, on? How, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys? How are you? Good, good. Absolutely great. Fuck yeah. We've seen a lot of frightening stuff this week. Nothing quite as, uh... Hey, it's my birthday, man. It was my birthday yesterday. I'm hanging out in my birthday suit, you know? I love it. I love it. Dude, this I mean, just you look yeah, at the you know I mean? right, Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> Mark the Sorry, that's too much? Down. Sorry. <laughs> What'd you say, David? Mark the stool body ass. He does. That is, hey, man. a frightening body. How old are you, Nick? Uh, just turned 26. 26 years old. And where are you at? What part of New York? Uh, <laughs> I'm in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I was actually on the, I was on the show in Milwaukee. Oh, okay. Yeah. Famous Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Lots of helicopters yeah. and police cars going by yeah, right now. I think now. we got the protesters outside. <laughs> Very exciting. Check my car. Very exciting stuff. Uh, Nick, have there been any protests around where you are? Uh, yeah, I was um, in one yesterday and uh, on Sunday as well. And I'm in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, just south of the city. Okay. Is that anywhere near Manitowoc? Uh, no, it's uh, about two miles or two hours drive south or so. You ever go there? You ever go to Manitowoc? Uh, driven through it, never, no, never a reason to stay. You know, this is not like it's showing two tour. episodes in a row. My love for uh, murder shows, uh, making a murder about Stephen Avery is all about Manitowoc, and I'm such a fan of that program and the follow-up programs to it that uh, I've honestly, so pretty much wanted to go there. I would love to go on a little secret adventure through that junkyard and dig around a bit. You guys, fans of that show at all? Big fan. We get tourist yeah. attraction, yeah. Is it? I, I, I yeah, imagine it, it has it's to Tony, be. It's a good investment opportunity. I think right now it's a good time to diversify. You know, I think you could do it. Yeah, I've been looking for a junkyard in Manitowoc, so I might be the one that I uh, go for. <laughs> yeah, smart. Speaking of uh, speaking of junkyard, crap. how do how do you get a body like that? What what is your nutritional? Uh, what do you mostly eat? I just asked William this, but I'm interested to find out exactly what it takes to be able to get a full layered. Like it looks like you have a bulletproof vest on under your skin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mainly, uh, like a lot of beer. I actually quit drinking like three weeks ago, and I've lost ten pounds already. So this is the wow. best I've looked in a while, unfortunately. Wow. A lot of just poor diet and beer. This is a beer gut through and through. I I have like a Hank Hill ass and a beer gut. That's like kind of the life I live. Wow, I've heard of Milwaukee's best. You might be Milwaukee's worst. <laughs> dude, I'm proud of that title. I'll, I'll own that with pride, dude. I got the scum stash and everything. God damn right. He is literally built like an orangutan. <laughs> it really is. It's quite the... Dude, uh, I, a, I wear a, a 40 long, too, man. You're not wrong. Yeah. I was wondering how long were you sitting there naked before the interview started? 
Oh, dude, it's been like 40 minutes. I've had to pee for like half of it. I, I got my dick in a goddamn birthday hat. You know, like this is. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been a great time. Hopefully, the best you've been using your, uh, your tushy from hellotushy.com <laughs> because if not, that, uh, that couch. Must have a little bit of a <laughs> smell to it. <laughs> but you can come back on a couch if, to if, do if, it, if it didn't already, you know? Yeah, absolutely. What do you do for work, Nick? Uh, I'm a bartender. Oh, cool. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, about two years bartending, serving before that. I've been out of work uh, for the last two and a half months, though, or so. I just actually got a new job offer from a place today, though. So things are looking oh, pretty cool. good. Oh, cool. What's the new job going to be? Uh, it's a bartending as well. Just, uh, I was working at a place about 30 minutes away. This one's closer to town. It's a little bigger following, so there may be a little safer money and things like that. So good opportunity. Sweet. What's your love life like? You hook up with a lot of chicks with a body like that? <laughs> or just birthday uh, Not hats. currently, no. <laughs> Dude, I killed in the hat game. Headwear, accessory game, killing it. But other than that, not really. Uh, yeah, the quarantine, I'm like, I've been following it for the most part as much as I can. And protests were kind of the only thing I went out for. I had to take a COVID test because of an outbreak in like a family member's workplace. So I've been holding steady, just hanging out. So I haven't even been trying. So yeah, I'm single and, you know, putting my dick in hats. I love it, man. I love it. Any other crazy fun facts about you? You have any special skills or talents or anything? Uh, nothing too, nothing, the talents I can juggle a little bit. That's not that crazy. Uh, started a podcast recently, not going to plug it because who cares? Right. Uh, and, uh, I'm uncircumcised. Oh, wow. Ew. I thought that was a birthday hat you had over there. And it turns out you're butt naked. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. There it it's is. more meat. That's the slogan. <laughs> I don't know if that's really yeah. what you would consider the meat. Like this just buy, in, it is. I don't. I don't really think that's how it it's works. More like smell. It's, like it's just like it's that's like saying, it. oh, this chicken had extra meat, but it's just skin, like a pile of skin no, right. next to the chicken breast. If you shower that checks regularly, out. man, it's not a problem to be uncircumcised. As long as you clean your shit, you're good. That's that, right. And you can clean your shit at hellotushy.com. I love it. I love it, Nick. Well, happy birthday to you, my friend. Congratulations on getting on the show. Yeah. And, uh, fun happy times ahead. birthday to you. Absolutely. It's coming up on yeah, Monday. Yeah, guys, man. Rock yeah. and roll. There he goes. Nick Davis, everybody. Lightning. Your next comedian goes by the name of Chris Trot Trotta. Chris Trotta. Here's Chris Trotta. All right, I'm gonna get straight to the shits. My dad's retarded when it comes to his cell phone. So like this one time he was trying to show me a video on his phone and he treated the video like it was an ugly girl on Tinder and accidentally swiped right. And the picture that he swiped to was my dad, mirror selfie, fully naked, half a child. Like dude was just standing there like this. So immediately he locks his phone and goes, ah, you know, I'll show you another time. No the fuck you won't. Like, you're never showing me nothing on your phone ever again. And before I repress this memory, we're going to talk about why I just saw the balls that produced me on your phone screen. Oh, what the fuck? And he makes the situation worse by telling me, ah, you know, it was, it was just something I sent your mother. Like, I'm fully convinced that the only reason I'm not in therapy from this situation is because my dick was bigger. But, like, honestly, I started walking around the house differently. I would be like, nah, you clean my room, shrimpy. I might be the biggest disappointment to mom in this house, but at least I'm not the smallest. Chris Trotta, welcome to the show, sir. Oh, How man. are you? Doing good. How about you guys? Good, 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 good. This just in, Tony, his dad has a small dick. Is that true? <laughs> Is that part true? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a true story, yeah. So it was a picture of his flaccid penis, or was it a boner? It was like half a chub. Like it was half a chub. Did it look familiar? Like, <laughs> I mean, no, I was wondering really. if you like look at your dad's dick if it's like I see, I see the resemblance. You know, like oh, I, I grew up in a pretty normal household, so that didn't happen. <laughs> He's like, no, this looks more like my mom. Hey. Very interesting. Um, and the balls were small too. Small balls. 
Uh, I really didn't look at it that hard. You know, I kind of <laughs> looked away as quick as I could. You looked at it not that hard, meaning like half chub? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like half chub hard. For sure. I love that. Fun times. You have a good, uh, you have a better suntan than you did uh, when you recorded that set. Oh, yeah. I've been fishing pretty much every single day, so I've been getting a lot of sun since oh, quarantine great. started. That's great. Yeah. Where do you, where do you, where are you at? Uh, I'm from New York, but I currently live in Florida trying to get my uh, master's degree. Hell yeah. What are you getting your master's in? Uh, business, so like marketing. Awesome. Fuck yeah. Where yep. out in Florida are you? Uh, Babson Park. It's like an hour south of Orlando. Oh, okay. That yeah. sounds lovely. Sounds like a great place. Yeah, right. you, what, what type of fishing do you do? You go, uh, what, what are you in a creek, a river, the ocean? Yeah, just like a river from largemouth bass. Sweet. Nice. Catching any peacock yep. bass down there? No, I think that's only in like Brazil, right? No, peacock bass are in Florida, bro. Really? really? No, I'm yes. all on that. Yeah, when idiots. You, when you say peacock like that, my booty hole tightens up. <laughs> I'm excited. Umbrella booty. <laughs> peacock bass are all through Florida, bro. We need that really? yeah, to kill fishing. Huh? That would be great. Be like, so I, I want to go fishing so bad. Yeah. Have, get together. Absolutely. I'm with that shit. I'm a good fisherman. Yeah. Oh shit, the Kill Tony we'll fishing trip. We'll take Red Band's canoe. It'll be yeah, great. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, we'll I use got my rollerblades roller in there. <laughs> Did you, you get your electric camera? bicycle yet? No, because all this shit was supposed to come this week. Oh my it god. Might be, I guess next week. Oh, I cannot wait to see you I can't wait on either. that thing. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> it's gonna be good for you. Get you out of that apartment. I sit outside all day. Yeah. I have a I now have a uh Whatever that thing is called, <laughs> hammock. Hammock. Yeah, your, your that shit's virtual bomb. Hammock. <laughs> yeah. Put this ham in a hammock. <laughs> I just picture you lying on the couch with your headset. <laughs> it's your virtual hammock. Virtual hammock. <laughs> <laughs> with a fan on it. Everything him. he does is virtual. I've been sitting outside every day. It's just him inside with the helmet. I played oh. virtual reality uh, laser tag the other day, and it was set up like the old school yeah. laser tag that and shooting cool. the chest and yeah. stuff. Fog machine. Oh, it sounds this. like only fun. reason you got a hammock because you thought it was a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I think a hammock is a sandwich? I'll have a large, a large hammock. Hold the mustard. That do sound like a sandwich. Oh my god! So he thought a hamlet was also. Oh. I'll have a ham omelet. A hamlet, please. Wow. That was funny, man. No, it was not. It, just yeah, make, it makes no sense. It was funny, though. A hammock? A it's hammock. A, it's not like a, a spicy ham sandwich. Yeah. Like... A ham. I'll take a 12 inch hammock on a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, Chris Trotta, tell us something else interesting about you. How long have you been a uh, young magician? <laughs> Magician? Yeah, you have young magician energies. <laughs> oh no, um, definitely not a magician. But you uh, seem like the I kind of magician that would have a hot assistant that's taller than you. I'm definitely short. Most of uh, my assistants have been taller than me. What do you consider short? Five eight. Wow, five see, eight. I don't think five, five eight is short. Not short. <laughs> Listen, I, people. Have, I've been hey, told by a lot of girls that they didn't want to date me. Yeah. I was too short. <laughs> I don't think that is actually <laughs> average height <laughs> for all Jesus like figures. I don't know what's been happening lately. I think well, I think the <laughs> definition of short has been changing yeah. tremendously. I would think 5'8 is about average. I think 5'8, I, I got 5'8 at completely <laughs> average. Five, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna ride your roller coaster, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's you not eat a few hammocks and I'll be you're back. Shorter here. Than us. Yeah, you're shorter than I'm five seven, but I'm not saying it ain't short. I don't think five five seven is short though. I think I think five seven you start yeah. to get short. Yeah, that's about when I think that's five eight would be considered yeah. average, and I think five nine is tall as hell. Five nine is average. <laughs> <laughs> five nine is average for men in America. It says five nine. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you good, bro? Absolutely. Put some boots on. A little better. Put some boots on. More boots, less booty <laughs> holes. Uh, what do you like to do for fun, Chris? Any fun hobbies or anything like that? Other than fishing? Uh, I, I, cocaine? I, I came to college for uh, bowling. I go to the number one bowling school in America. That Whoa. is the gayest shit. 
Yeah. What's what? what's the best game you've ever had? Three hundred. Wow. wow. No shit. Yeah. Wow, that's a yeah. lot of turkeys, Brian just thought. <laughs> yeah. That is definitely a white school where they don't want white people to feel inferior to black people. That they gotta have bowling. That's fair me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys stay in your lane. Did he say spare me? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, David, is bowling a white person thing? I bowl, but I'm also. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're a little bit different. I'm not. Put the bowl I'm, in bowling. Hey, man, shut your stupid ass up. Why would he put the bowl in bowling? Because he puts food in the bowl. He's fat. It's a fat joke. That's a stretch. You got a uh, you got a Oompa Loompa wig on. You can shut your ass up. You got a fucking Kenan and Kel wig on. Get the Whoa. fuck out of here. Rocket power head ass. Oh, shit. He's talking about rocket power, you look like fucking Tito from Rocket Power. Your hair look like, <laughs> your hair look like you just got off a motorcycle. Your hair looks like you've... Fucking work at a store that sells the motorcycle. Okay. <laughs> That's enough of that. That's enough of that. Dumb. We'll be, we'll be wet back after these messages. <laughs> That's our word. I love it. Um, so fun times, Chris. Is there anything else we should know about you before we let you go? Wow, 300. Uh, I'm still thinking. Really? It's been doing stand-up about three months before quarantine hit, so I'm... Can't wait to get back and doing that. Yeah. Uh, it must be yeah. a weird place to do that. Are there places around you, open mics or something? Uh, I usually have to drive to Orlando or Tampa for anything. So, like, I'm about, like, an hour out. So I'll just drive out there, spend the night, and do, do a set, maybe try and find another set. Let's check in uh, live on the scene with Chet Lightning. Yeah, Tony, honest question for you here. Uh, what did you do when you hit 300, and how many times have you hit 300? Like, what kind of reaction uh, did that elicit? Honest question. All right. So I got really excited the first time because it was in, like, I was in high school, and it was during, like, a high school match, so it was, like, wow. really, really cool. And the second time, it was just kind of, like, less. It, was, wow. it wasn't as fun because it was just in practice. Right. Um, what? So what is your average? That is incredible that you don't even get that excited at 300s anymore. Yeah. So, like, bowling is weird because in college you bowl on what's called, like, a sport shot. So if I have to put it into different terms, it's kind of like the strike zone in, in uh, baseball. So when you're bowling just, like, regular, like, in practice, you bowl on a house shot, and it's a big strike zone. But when you bowl on a sport shot, you have to hit, like, a smaller area in order to basically strike. Mm. So on sport shot, I'm probably around Welcome like. Welcome back to facts. No one gives a fuck about. Oh my god. We, yeah, 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 exactly. We definitely. Welcome back, Welcome back to facts. On. Only white people and David care about. <laughs> wow. Put your tape on. There you go. Put your tape back on. <laughs> tape time. I will not be silenced. It's tape time. Can you guys uh, turn off his mic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much. We got to keep it moving, Chris Trotta. Thank you so much. Very fun times. Awesome. Thank you. Great stuff. And uh, up next, ladies and gentlemen, this is a uh, young stranger that goes by the name of Nick Redonia. Here's Nick Redonia. Here's Nick Redonia. Volume check. Volume check. Volume. Gage, can we get the volume up now? I used to masturbate a whole bunch. Then I had to stop because I kept getting tennis elbow. But it was never in the arm that was jerking off. It was always the one that was flipping the burgers. People think I'm a hipster just because I have all the kids' bop albums on vinyl. I think I know who really did 9-11. It was the fashion police. If 9-11 never happened, the New York City skyline would still look so 90s. I'll end on a quick impression. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm gonna need like 13 waters. That was basic bitch Jesus. Thanks guys. Yeah. There he is, Nick Redonia. Okay, hell yeah. <laughs> that was good, Nick. It was good. 
I'm telling you, it's a tough world out there for uh, everybody. Paul W. I mean, that I gotta, I gotta, I'll yell at Gage for a second at that. Paul W.'s performance was so good and so well edited that it's really burying pretty much yeah, everybody. You gotta put that at the end. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put these people a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. Hot start. I love it. Manolo and Paul W. really got a kickstart, but that was good. That was good, Nick. We, we did no, have to turn the volume up right before uh, you on Chris Trotta. I actually did the thing that uh, you did the act out of. So you're pretty dialed in there. Oh, that's great. But yeah, it was. Uh, it feels good to bomb for you guys. It's good. It's good to have Louis J. Grossmez on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check in with Chet Lightning. Yeah, I was just curious how long you've lived inside of a shooting range. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What is that place? You throw axes for fun? Uh, uh, I'm in my parents' unfinished basement. Wow. Yeah. I miss basements. Those are the greatest. Yeah. You're the type. You're the type that would love a basement. Yeah, I mean, storage. It's always cool. Like in the summer, you can go down there, and it's nice and chilly. Do all the people that you do VR with talk a lot about the basements? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Virtual how... basements with Red Band <laughs> later on his YouTube channel. How long uh, How long have you been in your parents' basement? Your whole life, Mr. Redonia? Uh, no, just been here since the start of quarantine. I live in New York City normally. Oh, okay. And where's your parents' basement? Upstate? Uh, we're in rural Pennsylvania. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I know we we know a little bit about rural Pennsylvania. It's one of the only states that I will ask uh, specifically right around where in rural Pennsylvania are you? Uh, we're right near Allentown. Oh, okay. Bessemer. Uh, don't know what Bessemer is. Sure. Uh, we're close to Allentown. Uh, Allentown, and we're between Allentown and Reading. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're in. The is that by any work. chance on the way from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh? Because I remember it's a only... trip I took one time without the guys in a separate car. <laughs> Joel, from you will. There Philadelphia are... <laughs> to Pittsburgh. You should have heard this guy all all we all episode the last week. He kept referencing this joke that only four of us know about and will ever find funny. And there's so many things I want to say right now, but I can't. Too. Right, I know. It's literally we can't respond to it. Are Nobody you near Lancaster? I remember passing Lancaster. Fun fact: Joel has no yeah, I... idea what the difference between an inside joke and a regular joke right. is. He has no. I, I can appreciate that. Uh... He's wearing that tape. Yeah, where's... I hear they're finding a lot of winged dinosaurs in the red rocks in between Philadelphia and And then if you call him Pittsburgh. out on anything, he just talks blibber blabber. Blibber -blabber. <laughs> he, himself. he gets uncomfortable. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go back here to Nick Redonia. <laughs> Drop... Let go of the mic. Let go of the mic. <laughs> Step away. <laughs> oh, he is? Oh, that's cool. I just got word, uh, Mr. Redonia, that you are a, uh, a high-level uh, valedictorian on my new Roastmaster class. Yeah, I just uh, signed up for it. Excited to see what uh, what happens I love it. there. We have a lot of fun stuff fun. happening. We're doing a live crowd stream tomorrow. I hope that you're there. That's exciting. Wait, do you why, make fun? Of, why, do you find yourself having Joel to make, make fun face? of people a lot? What? Wait, what? Why'd Joel make that face just now? <laughs> I don't know. Go ahead, Joel. Tell him why you made a face. I didn't see it because I'm hosting the show. You. Go I ahead. seem to have lost my voice. Okie dokie. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know why he made a face. He's a little bit loopy right now. We just called him out on doing inside jokes on the show, and now he's self-destructing. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> do, you, uh, do you ever make fun of people? Do you have to make fun of people? Do you ever make fun of your parents or anything like that? Uh, uh, yeah, I like... I like making fun of people, and I've been, you know, trying the stand-up thing before quarantine started. I was just getting into it, uh, so that would be good to, you know, that, that's great. see what you that, had to teach. And that was in New York City? Yeah, in New York. Yeah, what type of places did you go? Where did you perform at? Uh, well, right before uh, quarantine started, I just had my first couple bringer shows at uh, Dangerfield's. But other than that, it was just other than that, it was just open mics. That's great, man. That's exactly what you got to do. You don't even have to do the bringer shows. Screw that shit. Just keep doing mics over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until you absolutely 
or doing something else. It's that simple. Definitely. Um, David Lucas, do you have any words of advice for this uh, young rising uh, comedian? Yeah, bro, stay away from them bringer shows. It uh, takes <coughs> away the value from live comedy. Uh, just keep, like you said, keep hitting open mics, bro. That's what I did until you get that chance to go do a showcase at a real club. Just make sure, what I always tell comics when they ask me something, make sure when you go to these big name clubs that you're ready for the time that they're going to give you. Don't go if you're six months in. Make sure you got a tight ass set and then make sure you got another tight ass set to follow that set with if they ask you to come back. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I want my ass to be uh, super tight. That's right. That's right. (laughs) Especially, you know, nowadays. Where there's a lot of bachelors out there, everybody needs to have a tight ass. No one wants a loose ass. <laughs> I thought you paid money for. Never mind. For what? For tightening your ass. <laughs> for a loose ass. For ass tightening. Do gay guys like loose asses? Why are you or asking tight me? Asses? <laughs> yes. Do, right yes. Uh, uh, we're gonna take a quick poll here. Do gay guys like tight or loose asses? No, yeah. With that, Brian Rudman. That was the part that the I noticed. There's literally like so much plural on that. <laughs> Asses. <laughs> asses to asses, well, it's, dust to it's, dust. It's interesting because, like, if it's a girl, you don't want a, a loose pussy. You want a tight pussy. Well, but why would they want a loose ass? You only, Ryan? Because only if you're it might be dick. easier. It might hurt if you're fucking a guy in the ass if it's too tight. What so would it? It hurt? might be too dry. So if it's nice and loose and like worn out, maybe. A, a, <laughs> why would it be wetter if it's? Why would it be wetter if it's looser? Well, because. <laughs> No, I mean, you could spit and stuff in it, but, like, if... Like, We're live here on the scene with biology major <laughs> Brian Redband. Dr. That's Redband again. Asking I think it's whether gay guys... I don't understand why they would prefer... Because if... Straight or gay, I don't think that changes the, the yeah, texture of the thing you like to put They care about into. the person, Redband, who the man is on the inside. No, I'm talking about... <laughs> Dirty butt sex. I'm not talking about love butt. It's like sex. a flashlight. Why would you? Who loosens up their flashlight? Who runs it through a fucking? Who runs a baseball bat through their flashlight before? <laughs> Why did I just get an image of Brian Redband eating <laughs> a roll of toilet paper that's flavored? Okay. All right. Anyway, Nick Redonia. Any other uh, fun facts we should know about you before moving on? Uh. Uh, I was on uh, the one of the New York uh, audio only shows with my brother, and he was uh, in a drum off. He was kind of hoping to say hello to Joel real quick. Oh, cool! Oh, okay. Is he there? I remember this? Yeah, he's here. Oh, okay. I think I sort of remember Wh- you. Which guys. New York show? Gramercy Theater. Oh, yeah, yeah, was it the one where I beat him, or the one where I beat oh. him? Oh, <laughs> what's up? That's right. Up? Yeah. Which which show yeah, at Gramercy uh, were you a drummer on? Was that Big J Okerson, uh, Shane Gillis? No, uh, Mark Marin. Mark Marin wasn't on in uh, <laughs> New York City. You mean Gilbert Godfrey? Mark Norman. Oh, Mark Norman. Mark Norman. Oh, what did I say? Yep. Nice. You said Mark Marin. It's okay. <laughs> oh, you you compared him. You compared my brother to Mark Marin or something like that. Uh, okay. But yeah, it was Mark Norman. That's right. It's all making sense to me now. Heck yeah. <laughs> Did you, uh, how do you feel now, months after your performance against uh, Joelberg, Joel Jimenez? Have you perhaps been practicing more or have you completely given up on the drums? Yeah, I've been practicing, yeah, every day. (laughs) Joel, this would be a a good opportunity for you to speak, (laughs) unlike the last 12 things that you you said. You DM'd me recently, right? Ooh. Yeah, mm. yeah, I'll get correct. those loaded up the next time and read these private messages this man has been sending me. Oh, <laughs> let me just say we're gonna need some flavored toilet paper. Whoa, <laughs> let's just say I we're gonna need some loose hilarious. asses up in here. <laughs> I kicked his asses. I have no more questions to ask this as you, any of you. So, uh, congratulations on the ranch. Assess, assess the situation next yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, to the Redonia boys out there in Pennsylvania, thank you very much for joining us. And I uh, hope to see you guys again soon. Thank you to you and your brother, Nick Redonia. Yep. yep. And with no further hesitation, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the diamond in the rough, the one, the only. The stone cold assassin, ladies and gentlemen, 
my pride and joy, the man I love more than perhaps any of my own family members or friends, the one, the only, Michael Lair, everybody, is here, live. Hi, Michael. Oh, my ass is so tired. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Hey, guys, it's I so like good it. to see you. Absolutely. Hey, David. What up, fool? Fuck <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. I just had dinner. <laughs> How dinner was it? <laughs> I just had dinner. Yeah? What'd you have for dinner? Hammock and cheese. <laughs> And I crowned you. Alright. <laughs> I was I was marching all day. Um obviously in my wheelchair. But they had a different march. Cause I'm tired of guys who are five A being called short. <laughs> I'm five A standing up. Imagine how short I am now. <laughs> All right. No, I'm sorry. Um, you know, even with everything that's going on, Hollywood won't stop pounding down my door. So I've had my doctors inject me with amphetamines. So I can write 24 seven. And I'd like to share with you today with help from Jesse, Tony and Brian, my latest script. Oh, this is great. I didn't even know we were going to read a script today. This is very exciting. Yeah, um, it's my latest. Now let me introduce him. Um, on September 11th, 2001, America suffered its first corona, but with planes and buildings. And one little known fact is that Marky Mark Wahlberg was supposed to be on one of those doomed flights. I reimagined that awful day if Marky Mark was there and saved America, this is great vibrations. The Marky Mark 911 Black Mirror Spec Odyssey. Yeah. All right, Tony will be reading the part of Mark Wahlberg. Brian will be reading the part of Wahlberg's travel companion, Turtle, from Entourage. Oh. Any dialogues in italics are lyrics from Mark Wahlberg's seminal hit, Good Vibrations, and should be delivered like Mark Wahlberg wrapped them in the song, Good Vibrations. We open on an airplane. Seated inside are Mark Wahlberg and Turtle from Entourage. Yo, Marky, what do you want to drink from the stewardess? Sunkissed. Dope. Yo, that's not a stewardess. That's a 9-11 hijacker. Stop him, Marky. Save America. Wahlberg approaches the hijacker. Come on, swing it. C -c -c come on, swing it. C -c come on, swing it. Yo, Marky, you smashed that terrorist, but who's going to land this plane? Me. You can land a passenger airplane? I can finger Reese with a spoon on a roller coaster in the movie Fear, and I can land a passenger airplane. True dat. But we're not landing yet. We're going to find Osama bin Laden, the bad dude who planned all this. How do you know that? After Boogie Nights, I went full Illuminati. That's dope as fuck. 
Marky and Turtle fly to Afghanistan, zero dark 30. They land at bin Laden's headquarters and quickly discover that Osama bin Laden, the mastermind of 9-11, is Marky's brother, Donnie Wal- Wahlberg. Brian is no longer Turtle from Entourage. Brian is now Donnie Wahlberg. Hey, why did you do this to America, Donnie? I haven't been the same since new kids broke up. You need help, bro. But America and the world will eventually forgive you because Blue Bloods <laughs> is going to be such a bomb-ass show. The end. True dad. We like that a few things silly. here. I like that. That was so much fun. That was... <laughs> Yeah, you're a genius, you Michael. You guys nailed it. I don't, I don't know how to do a Mark Wahlberg impression, and I don't know, uh, I don't know how the rap to uh, Great you're Vibrations goes. Damn close. But good you know vibrations. What? Great vibrations. Yeah. Uh, good vibrations. Oh, good vibrations. Oh. Yeah, that's the, the movie is great vibrations. I only know the I only know the good vibrations from the Beach Boys. That's my. Yeah, there's a better one than Marky Mark did. I'm giving out good vibrations. Come, come, come on, swing, swing it. it. Come, 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 come on, swing it. Can we get a moment of silence now? Black Lives Matter. Oh, come on. <laughs> what is that? Is that Trump? <laughs> David, I can't believe you don't know that white person song. What song is it? Beach Boys? Good Vibrations from the Beach Boys. I know the good vibrations. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's not it. No way, he does not know that song. You are right. That is uh, that is a different version of that song for sure. Hey, I Go know ahead, there's a lot going on, but <laughs> <laughs> and I call attention to my favorite charity. Do I have your attention? Yes, you have our attention, Michael. The Ellen DeGeneres Can Wildlife you read Fund. It? The Ellen DeGeneres yeah. Wildlife Fund. What is that? My. F- <laughs> it's a. <laughs> it's a. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What does that mean? <laughs> what is the Ellen DeGeneres Wildlife Fund? I gotta know. It explains itself. <laughs> Like, what else do you want to know? Give to the Ellen. Like, Ellen DeGeneres has a wildlife fund. Oh, yeah, What's yeah. What's the mystery? Right, so that's funny because it's like the whitest thing anybody could give to, right? Not everything. <laughs> 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 I think the video is skipping. Go hockey. Swing it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't swing it. Swim. Hey, I can sing it. Come on. Subscribe. Black lives matter. Come on. Come on. Feel it. Feel it. Oh, feel the yeah. vibration. Yeah. Now I remember it. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean to prove you, Mark and Mark, and I mean to do you. Fuck yeah. 
Well, Michael, uh, I, I, another yeah. amazing, amazing performance. You you really surprised us. I had no idea you were sending in a script. I love it how some things you'll give us a little bit of a warning for. Some things you'll surprise us with. You are such a great judge of a. Uh, of so of everything comedic you even bring out the best and silliest in all of us and you did it again this week great job man you're absolutely unbelievable and for such a great performance i'm going to donate 100,000 of my own dollars to the ellen degeneres wildlife fund thank you <laughs> you're finally why people wait, wait, wait. priorities absolutely all right absolutely 100 thank you jesse Thank you. The great Michael Thank Lair, you. everybody. There we go. Thank you, Michael. I love that man with all of my cold black heart. Your next comedian goes by the name of Black Dust. Here for the first <laughs> time is Black Dust. Dust. Oh, oh hey there. I was just reading. I'm Black Dust. And I consider myself undefeated in fist fights. And that's not because I've won every fist fight. That's because the only person who's ever beat me up is now dead. As, as fuck. <laughs> it only took me eight years. Surprise, yes, that was a death match. I'm sorry you didn't know. <laughs> now while I de technically didn't kill him, pneumonia did. I believe in God because he answered my prayers that day. <laughs> Speaking of God, my neighbors have smeared a lot of red mud on their door in hopes that coronavirus will pass over them. Barbara, you stupid bitch. Lamb's blood does not equal red mud. You might think that crystal meth equals the cure for retardation, but it don't. You're fucked. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. what? I love that. You know what? I didn't understand a single joke, but with all the stuff going with all this stuff going on in the world, I'm gonna say that was my favorite set of the night. <laughs> I like that we kept talking about like uh, punching, but you were only using your feet. Yeah, you have a uh, you are That's the worst hair I've ever seen on a black guy. Man, yeah, he's trying to pull a he's trying to pull a William Montgomery and crop it out right that now. I got a push broom on his head. <laughs> <laughs> it, is it is. It is. I can tell you date a white girl, bro. No, she's ne She's Mexican and Native American, but close, you know. Yeah, yeah. it is. Same an amount of fucked up. Yeah. yeah, it is an impressive haircut. This is what it would look like if Beavis was on BET. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it, man. So, uh, where are you at, Black yeah. Dust? We're in Oklahoma City. Oh, oh shit, that's a crazy place to be right now, huh? I've been on yeah, that one so a couple much. of times. Yeah. Oh, you, you made fun of this my, guy? Uh, yeah, my been, beard. I, yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. You got the same beard as you <laughs> the top of your head. Carpet. <laughs> carpet matches the, uh, the way down. curtains. Yeah. I love it. What do you do for work in Oklahoma City? I actually just landed a job at a fast, uh, I mean, a fine dining restaurant. It's kind of a change from what I'm used to. Oh, wow. What are you doing in fine dining? Well, I'm working my way up to chef, but for now I'm on the cold side. I'm like a stew chef right now in training. Oh, cool. Where are you working at? Roofs, Chris? Longhorn. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it's called Fight My Song. I guess it means uh, um, homemade in French. But I say, if you want to fight my son, you have to fight me too. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> are those your it's knives like, that you got in your lap? Yeah, here's a, a katana right here. Ah, oh, sick. You cook wow. with those? And yeah, I do cook with these. Yeah, I usually cook with long tooth hair. 
because it's plastic, so I can clean it easily. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> be slicing sushi. Also written Michael Lair on Twitter with these. So. Oh, sweet. That. Absolutely. Now, are nunchucks illegal? Because I was told, like, somebody <laughs> sent me a pair, and and then, like, somebody's like, you better hide those. You're not allowed to have Was thought... that with you guys or with Rogan where I was saw? With yeah, it was, right? Yeah. And what was going on at that time? I feel like there was I think some... we were flying from Vancouver here, oh, and yeah, this yeah. girl taught <laughs> nunchuckery, <laughs> and she had her training chucks with her, yeah, yeah. and they training. took them away from her. <laughs> yeah, Rogan. and she was, like, surprised that... TSA took her nunchucks. So she was like, this what happens. Is? I know why they're stopping me. It's because I got nunchucks. It happened to me last week or whatever. <laughs> so weird. Very bizarre to try. Well, to in Oklahoma, nunchucks. I'm not really sure. I know that you can carry a cane sword in Oklahoma now. Wow. That's basically Isn't my Oklahoma only option. one of the places you could just walk down the street with your guns? Well, I can't, but <laughs> most right. people can. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you were born and raised, Oklahoma City. Um, a little, a little while out of Oklahoma City, but we're we're here now. I've been informed that I you have moved. a boxing reel and a music video. Are those the same thing, or is it one video or two no. separate things? Um, let's watch the music. Been, the music is trash. Is it trash? Been, hey, well, let's no, watch they, it. If the music video is trash, let's check out some of your trash one, music. You can watch a, me get knocked down too. I get oh, knocked okay. down pretty good. Dude. Yeah, watch this one. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Black Dust presents. Come on, man. Choklahoma. Choklahoma. Oh, you got Joel in this. <laughs> this is my hometown. Man, I hope that is not my car alarm yeah, going off right I, now. I know. I hate it. rope. It feels like I am choking on. I made it back. So tell me who is smoking on. My absence and why my mattress don't be broken, huh? I the chosen one, shit I barely noticed. We too fucking focused. Oh, don't fall in. Why do you keep on saying? Ring the fucking bell. Break this fucking jail. I hate this fucking hell. Well, I made it. Back to where I started. Where the heart is. Then your world and parts are started. I'm here. You kept that in. Choking in the back of some shit you never paid for. And where are you? Now that's the worthy token. Bottom of the ocean, feeling sorry for his own shit. Fix me, now fix us. Wake up. Wow, yeah, no, it's bricks. true. This Cooking is uh, this panic, is pretty bad. Take another whiff. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Well, I mean, it's funny think, that you left think, you falling in. Like you're not taking this serious, obviously, because you you left. Well, uh, we're, we're being well, informed that. Uh, Gino, give us the report. Just tell us. It's okay. <laughs> The march, the what, protest. How about in the back? Is everything clear? Okay, well, that's fine. Um, that song I made after I got so out we'll of go jail, south. I was like in a really weird spot then. Right, but when we leave, we'll just go south. Okay, cool. Oh, jeez. If we leave. Yeah, I know. We <laughs> no, might we'll be, be fine. We'll be fine. Uh, Our yeah, building's so surrounded by protesters. I thought I sent Gino Ninja Shit, which is my like my favorite one. Uh, that one was like a song I made after I got out of jail, and I was just feeling all kind of weird ways and stuff. Did you go to jail for nunchucks? No. Uh, possession of marijuana, actually. They just revoked my probation. I did 90 days. My goodness. How much marijuana did you have on you? Hey, Graham. It wasn't mine, either. Oh. I was just, like, arguing about... Oh, it Marijuana. drives me <laughs> fucking yeah. crazy. How long yep. were you in jail? I'll three be... months? Is that what yeah. you said? Three yeah. You were in a jail for three months for a gram of marijuana? Honest question. Do well, you think I, a white had, person like, would have done the same time for the same amount? It's funny because I did meet a guy in there who was there for two months, and he just had a weed charge. Uh, but mine was like they revoked my probation from something that happened when I was 18, and that was my first offense, too, so I'm still like... I'm getting fucked here. I only got in one fight in jail, by the way. Oh yeah, explain to us how that how did that go down exactly? Your one fight. Um, I'm always interested. Yeah, okay. yeah. I was known as like a fun guy who you could wrestle with, and right. I, I just like to have fun. This guy came up behind me and got me in a rear naked choke. Yep. So I turned into it, and I get out of it, and we go to the ground. I put him in an arm bar, and I'm like, hey, just tap out, and it'll all be over. Hey, we're just having fun, right? And he's like, no, I'm not going to tap out. And I was like, e, I'm not going to oh. let go. Oh, and he's shit. like, let go of me, you fucking nigger. Oh. So I, I got up, let go of him. I'm like, let's do this right now. And 
Uh, he was being a pussy. He goes back to his cell. I go back to the kitchen. I'm working. Everybody knows about it. So when I finally go back to the pod, my cousin actually goes and gets him out of his cell because he's like pretending to sleep. And uh, yeah, we go into the cell. I threw this outrageous punch that went like in the air and just missed totally. And uh, I don't know, that's kind of my move. I'm like unimposing. And then I, I anticipate the uh, return attack and I duck in and I grabbed him, I slammed him, I was like, bup, bup, bup. I let him up, hit him one more time, and I let him. Uh, and then they were all like, yay, Darius, you did it. You defended your honor. You can watch Stephen Colbert tonight. Hey. It was great. <laughs> I love that. That's how. <laughs> That's how white people award each other by winning fights, too. Stephen if you win your yeah, fight, you um, get to watch Stephen Colbert. Oh, God, let's go. It's, it's funny because um, in the in the pod before this one that I moved out of, I'd gone to, I don't know if you know, it's like kangaroo court where the races hold everybody. is By your race, you're, you're held accountable. So it was yeah. like the first time they took me to court. I wouldn't take a shower because I was really depressed. And I was like, when I first got there, so they're like, hey, nigga, you stank, go take a shower. So I did that. The second time I was like shadow boxing and like I had my hands wrapped and I was like kind of hitting the wall, just trying to stay, do my thing. They're like, hey, you're making us look bad. Cut it out. And the third time I just tried to, I saw some guy getting like jumped by seven people and I was like, hey, what's going on? And they took me in the cell. They're like, that's white people shit. Don't fuck with them. I'm like, hey, okay. Wow. So I've come close. Few That's times. wild. My goodness. Life's crazy. So you, you can tell spent, I'm not made. You spent time in jail. Uh, you might know the answer to this. Do uh, do rapists like looser asses or tighter asses? You like a looser one, so your friend can can put his in there at the same time. That's oh, right. Oh, there you there go. You go. There Being here, can both go to town on Jeremiah. There it is. I don't know. Oh, if, friend. I don't know if you and I could uh, fit. <laughs> At and the Jeremiah. same time, just based yeah. on just based on angling around the rest of your body, we could twist it like a pretzel. Get your "I'm a Good Boy" merch at JeremiahWatkins.com. Black Dust, so much fun, fun times hanging out with you. Thank you Good so job, much, man. Black Dust, everybody. Yeah. The first time Black Dust has been on the show. We'll see you again soon, pal. There he is. Comedian of the night, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, famous from Roast Battle at the Comedy Store, here is Los Digits. Here he is, Los Digits. Here he is, Los Digits. Yo, a lot of weird shit is happening during the quarantine. People are protesting to be set free from their homes. Prisoners are rioting to get out of their court-appointed homes. I mean, the outside is pretty much turning into jail. I remember when fools in jail would fight for the toilet paper. We would call that shit the pillow. But now the fools on the outside are fighting over the toilet paper like they were on the inside. I don't get it. Is it the same as jail? Are you guys using the toilet paper to make shanks? What the fuck is going on? Is the one with the most toilet paper the outside leader? I don't get it. People are acting like this was just for reals. I mean, just the other day I went to Walmart and I seen a Mexican guy almost get stabbed. It's because he was hanging out with the whites, Tony. But it's just weird shit happening. Mexico's now considering buying a wall so Americans won't cross over. Boy, how the walls have turned. I mean, Trump is trying to kill off the population because he heard if he kills off everybody, he would be the smartest man in the damn world. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. There he is. Roast Digits, one of my favorite roast battlers in all of Los Angeles, hanging out with both what appears to be a uh, a statue of a dog and a statue of a white man at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the I white man do. just moved. What's up, Digits? How are you, my man? Hey, what's up? I'd like to say, uh, first of all, to the police uh, commission panel, um, I yield my time. Absolutely. No, <laughs> he's looking sharp in that suit. What's up, Joe? What's up? I absolutely love this guy. <laughs> I don't know what it is about him. You guys are both uh, Latino. Oh, that must be it. Love the Cholo's hat, love the jacket, love the graffiti in the other background. 
Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. You you definitely graffitied your own uh, what appeared to be bedroom there. Whose house have you broken into that you're filming at now? <laughs> uh, uh, this guy right here, I'm holding him hostage, but it's a different story. I own him now. I love it. How about the dog? What's the story with that dog back there? The RCA dog. Uh, that that was free to go whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Digits is an absolute legend in Roast Battle. Uh, it's no secret that he is, um, you know, they have their own culture over there at Roast Battle. Tuesday nights at the Comedy Store has always been complete chaos and so much fun. We have Mondays and they have Tuesdays. And uh, Digits is famous for an extremely unorthodox style of being very serious, much like you see right now, uh, <laughs> and... Um, moving around a lot. It's very hard to describe. Um, what have you been doing to uh, let out some of those roast energies that you're famous for on Tuesdays now that uh, we've all been quarantined? I know it made me loopy the first month or two. How are you holding it together? Well, see, Tony, here's the difference between me and you, Tony. I've done, I've done jail time, and uh, this is no big deal. I mean, I've done it once or twice before, and uh, you see what happened to my room? I painted the shit out the walls. That's yeah. what's happening, Tony. I'm not going crazy, Tony. I'm just getting more artistic by the minute. So, <laughs> God, I love that, man. I'm not going crazy. I'm just getting more artistic by the minute. That is beautiful. You are. Yeah, you are. I've been hanging out on. I've been hanging out on mugshots.com, dog, and roasting everybody on there. There's like fucking fifty. <laughs> There's like ten thousand motherfuckers on there by state, dog. I'm not even joking. I love that. Have uh, David Lucas is a roast god as well. Have you guys ever come across each other on the streets or in battle or anything? Nah, I never. Just seen him at the comedy store. Yeah. You, yeah, you yeah, seen, have you yeah, seen, seen him? Yeah, I've seen him at the comedy store, man. Yeah. I've seen have him you, live on Kill Tony, too. Yeah, have you ever seen him roast battle someone? Nah. It's a sight to see. <laughs> whole different, uh, whole different oh, yeah, type yeah. of. I think David Lucas on that uh, that school thing, the roast thing. That's pretty bad. Shout out. All Dev Digital. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Roast yeah. me. Yeah. Roast me. There you go. I like that. Yeah. Bye. Yep. Yep. What Shout is what? What's the story with that white guy behind you? Does he ever move? It's like a young Only weekend one. at Bernie's. It's like the opposite of William yeah. Montgomery's guy. Man, I don't need another beer, but he'll move after. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Digits. What did you go to jail for? <laughs> hey! Holy shit. Damn, that's nice. You guys are oh. a unit over here. These are like if the Sklar brothers had bad parents. <laughs> <laughs> Scar brother. <laughs> what did what did you go to uh to jail for? We just had another young man on before you, uh that uh got caught with a gram of pot and had to do three months. So you, you would you like to talk about why they put you in jail or is that off limits? Uh, I went to jail for uh, breaking into white people's houses and holding them hostage, but that was years ago. So I don't I don't, I don't do that no more. Hell yeah, no, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Absolutely not. We're not telling on you, for sure. That's neither here nor there, Tony. Hell yeah, I'm no rat. I'm not a snake. Nah, I went to uh, I went to the first time I went for uh, graffiti, man, and then the mm. second time I did it for beating up a couple of security guards. Oh, oh uh, okay, all right. There's records. On. Fuck yeah, man. Well, we got to get you on one of these shows back at the comedy store when business gets booming again. He's doing roast battle here on Friday. Is that true? Yeah, I'm doing them here and there uh, every once in a while, and uh, I'm doing the international battle uh, roast too, a roast battles. I'm doing the Tokyo one on the 26th, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, I'm doing every, all the other ones: Australia, England, um, trying to get New Zealand. Fuck yeah! And yeah. Uh, I mean, it's incredible how great of a roaster you are, and the fact that. Uh, you know, clearly you're trying to even get better because a fun fact is that Digits was actually the first human being that signed up the second that we went live uh, at midnight on Sunday with Roastmaster class. The first uh, name that uh, dropped in was Los Digits. And, uh, oh, yeah, I was waiting, man. I love that, dude. And for sure, you're going to, uh, you're going to end up... It's always weird saying learning, but you're going to end up finding out some crazy stuff and uh, tactics and exercises and muscles to be grown. 
Um, we just saw some video of you roasting. Is it hard roasting without an audience here at uh, Better Box? Not, it's different, but it's not hard. I mean, right. I think it's kind of easier because uh, if you eat shit, you don't know it until you get home. <laughs> <laughs> Digits, I love you, man. I love your I style. Mean, everybody, everybody in that room has to laugh anyway. Yeah. Or else it's, it's going to be a bad day. Fuck yeah, dude. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Kill Tony. You can find him at Los Digits everywhere on social media. He's a badass motherfucker. We absolutely love you. Great performance here today. There was a lot of tough acts to follow on before you, and uh, you were hilarious. Shout out to the uh, innocent victim who had his house broken into behind you. Shout out to the dog. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Fuck yeah. Hey, let's check in with Ryan J. Ebelt real quick with tonight's drawing. He had to draw it from home tonight because we had to switch stuff around. Wow. Look wow, at that. Wow, that's badass. Oh, that's my sweet. God. Long distance, powerful Kill Tony drawing for this very chaotic episode. I absolutely love the fire and the chaos going on in this. Very fitting for these times. Very cool. With a paparazzi-esque camera down there as in uh, the newscasting I do believe is being covered with that. And um, Ryan J, anything else I'm missing about it? Uh, his mic's messed up. Ryan J, can you hear me? Yeah, we're having audio audio troubles with Ryan J. It's another demented, uh, haunted... <laughs> RyanJEbelt.com. Everything's on sale right now. Kill Tony. You got the Kill Tony book. You got every print that he draws every episode. You can get posters and all that stuff there. For sure. And don't forget, you can submit your own minute to this show. KillTonyQuarantine at gmail.com. And a lot of other fun stuff happening. Of course, you have Brian on VR. You have my new Roastmaster class on Patreon. Jeremiah? Venmo at Jeremiah Dash Watkins. Thank you much so much for joining us here tonight on the show. And Todd Glass is the guest on Jeremiah Wonders this week. Right. One of my favorites in the entire world. So you're definitely going to watch that on YouTube.com slash Jeremiah Watkins. There you Black go. Jeremiah matter. Wonders. And uh, the great Jetski Johnson was here. She's on social media at Jetski Johnson. Anything else, Jesse? So good to be here with you guys during this chaotic time and you guys watching at home. So take care of each other. Absolutely. Uh, believe it or not, this was Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez all night long. Joel, uh, <laughs> you're Mostly Sorry on social media. You have the brand new podcast, Mostly Sorry, which I got to catch some of and absolutely loved it. Thanks. Yep. Thank Anything you. else? What, what else? No, new episode coming soon. Uh, I love you guys. Stay safe out there. Happy to become uh, bring some joy for a little bit. The great David Lucas was yeah, with man. us. Uh, I've talked about it every episode, but he's hilarious on Instagram. He roasts people uh, late at night. David Lucas funny. Anything else, David? Uh, we probably won't have a Brothers in Cursive this week uh, due to us having to uh, move stuff out of the studio and board it up due to the riots. So check us out next week. Love it. Love Brothers in Cursive. And I love uh, Dead Air with Brian Holtzman. I caught the episode with Michael Lehrer. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something. I mean, and you know, it might not be the same for you listeners that don't know Brian Holtzman quite as well as we do. You know him from a couple episodes of this show and maybe Dead Air. But, man, did I love watching those two going back great and couple. forth. They're, they're, oh they're, they have great my chemistry. my God. Yeah. It was like uh, fucking Godzilla and King Kong yeah. because, like, I don't think there were times where they where it wasn't connecting, and it, but it still was hilarious. And no, Either way, it was hilarious the entire time. Um, that was awesome. Everything Michael Lair, of course, MichaelLairComedy.com. And, uh, yeah, what else? Thanks a lot, guys. Be safe. Yes. Goodbye.